Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. It's that time, part two of two for the pumpkin. Grain the glass, I don't do anything else. I don't believe in watching a whole movie getting to the last 15 minutes and what happened? Yeah, that drives me nuts. Um, I've noticed most YouTube videos out there for beer brewing, they've caught on and they're doing grain the glass. They're not going, hey, look at what I brew. And nothing. <laughs> it's painful. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, share, share. If you're watching the video, please subscribe. That helps a lot. Even if you're not watching little pop-ups on the side that says, hey, you got another video from Bitter Reality Brewing, the subscriptions help a great deal, more than you realize. Number two, if you're gonna buy something and we're linking it down below, feel free to click on the link. Throws a little chump change, helps cover costs to a degree, not all of it, sadly. Um, we have a problem with the pumpkin. We can say it's a little problem if you like high ABV. <laughs> we can say it's a big problem if you don't. I was shooting for a 7.8% ABV which our original gravity should have been 1.074, which we nailed. Then I was hoping for a 1.075 after adding the pumpkin according to the grams of sugar. Always do that. When you add fruit or anything, look at the grams of sugar. You can go online, you can figure out exactly how many ounces or grams of corn sugar that would equal. And you can throw that in to help get your gravity so you know where your original gravity should be if you don't take hydrometer reading after adding that because some of that stuff's so thick it's very hard to get a good reading well i don't know if they lie on the cans of pumpkin or something but we ended up at 1.080 original gravity which really, really wasn't too bad knowing that according to beersmith and the information supplied from white labs we should have finished at a final gravity of 1.016 yeah no Some things went our way, some things not so much. We're sitting at 9% pumpkin imperial ale. Hopefully it's damn good at 9% because that's really strong. Um, we ended up at 1.013 final gravity and Beersmith says that should put us right about 9%. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move this. I've been letting it kind of sit up here for a few days at just room temp, about 73, 74 degrees. I've been taking hydrometer readings with the tilt um, I believe that's the yellow one, which is actually one of the most accurate. If not, it's one I've calibrated, so we're all good. Already purged this bad boy. Um, also found a trick recently. If your little rubber seal doesn't feel like it's sticking just right, just spray a little bit of watered down star sand across the top, put it in, put it in, pull it. The moisture level will stay up because the beer is gonna be in there and the moisture is fine. But that way you don't have to worry, if, or you can rinse it real quick, stick it in there. I've done that before. But that way I know I'm getting a good seal. These things are starting to get a little age on them and every now and then get a leak and never know where it's from. I spray it down, sometimes I find it, sometimes I don't. So we've already purged the air in here, as you can hear, and that was watered down or washed. Did the star sand through the pump, then we did regular hot water. The water is kind of cool. It's fine, it was hot when I started. Whew. Smells nice. It smells a little strong, but it smells nice. Stick that there. Let's rock and roll with the pump. I forgot something. Forgot something. My son swapped back to the 1.75 gallon from his one gallon. This one has a little bit of a leak, so I gotta figure out where it is. It's definitely in the top piece, but we'll figure it out. So I'll stick this over here. Okay, there we go. Time to start the pump and speed things up a bit. <clears throat> Not sure why we're getting so much air in the line. Definitely got a little bit of air in there, but that's okay. We'll purge it out with CO2 and get it all out. CO2 is much heavier than oxygen. Okay, we're gonna get this cleaned up, chilled out. I've got bits of pumpkin stuck in the, there we go. It's a good sign. I'm not gonna be clarifying this in any way other than cold, and that's it. 
I want to make sure that we have little tiny bits of pumpkin hopefully floating around in there and it didn't all fall out of suspension. So, smells nice. Doesn't smell as alcoholic now, which is good. On to the next part. My wife pointed out that you might want to see this part. So, I keep mentioning bourbon vanilla. Never been opened, but it's from Trader Joe's. Pure bourbon, bourbon vanilla extract. So, basically, bourbon vanilla bean extracted in water and alcohol, 35%. Smells like vanilla, just very smooth, very smooth. It's gonna go for a whole tablespoon, but <laughs> that might be a bit much. So we're gonna go for half a tablespoon. And like I said, I purged it. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, pretty full, that'll work. I'm good with that. Took a little tiny sample from this and it was good. Would have liked it a little more pumpkin spice, but I'm afraid if I put much more, it'll go a little crazy. I think the bourbon and carbonation will help it stand out more. Okay, there's a hair less than a half a teaspoon. Try not to spill it. Since, as you may have noticed, my hands shake sometimes more than other times. But of course, when I'm trying to do something very careful, you know what, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit more since I did spill some of that. So, uh, use two hands and keep things stable as much as I can. I've always shaken a little bit, but as I've gotten older, it seems to get a little worse. There we go. We'll chill that down, let that kind of sit in there and blend itself up a little bit, especially with me trying to get it into the keg. I always shake the hell out of things. Let it chill down and we'll go from there. See so if we need to add a little more, pull a little more, you know, we'll figure it out. So, thank you again. Okay, you saw us transfer the pumpkin. So let's put it in the keg, carbonated it, shook the hell out of it. I was rolling it around for probably a good 20 some, maybe 30 minutes. I really, really wanna try it. <laughs> Went against the grain and I did not boil this like I should have and hopefully I don't regret it. But I used this Fresh Jack's pumpkin spice to add another half a teaspoon worth of spice. I just didn't feel like it had enough spice. I could taste the roasted pumpkin more so on my palate and even in the aftertaste, but I didn't get the pumpkin spice. So I had to add that. And the spice is essential as much as the pumpkin is. And then Trader Joe's vanilla extract, add another half a teaspoon of that. Bourbon vanilla, however you want to say it, but awesome vanilla. Okay, so let's go for this. Okay, the pumpkin ale. No, we didn't go for clarity. <laughs> Lesson learned. As you saw, we transferred it, put it in the kegerator. Well, what you didn't see offline was pumped it up to 30 PSI. I shook it, I rolled it, I flipped it, I shook it, I rolled it. Really, 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 really wanted to get it carbonated quickly. It looks amazing. Smells amazing. And tastes incredibly drinkable. Incredibly drinkable. I almost forgot it's at 9% ABV. So yeah, you don't even notice it. You don't smell it. You don't really taste the alcohol. It's super smooth. Here's where I screwed up. I added a lot of pumpkin spice that I made my own mixture from scratch and I added it to the boil. That settled out during fermentation, which was good, leaving some of the flavor behind. Cinnamon is a bark and it does never truly dissolves. What I didn't think about is some of this is a little thicker than that powdered spice. It's a little more granular. So this is like the fourth take. We went to pull the tap the first time it was working great. Looked good, all good. Then the actual disconnect, or what do you call the? <sighs> Been a long day. The little puppet. Yeah, the puppet. Basically, in the keg, got clogged. 
from bits of cinnamon or spice. Might even be the orange zest because that's where I got the idea from the orange zest. And we were getting a drizzle and a drizzle. Finally had to take it out, went and cleaned it, put it back, put everything back the way it was. And it poured just fine. It does taste amazing. I doubt it's gonna last. I really wish that ABV was a little lower. Not gonna be able to enjoy quite as many of these as a session type brew, but hey, it is what it is. Threw up a little GIF I found out there. Yeah, it's a GIF, it's doing some, some sort of animation. But happy Halloween to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy whatever you celebrate. If you like pumpkin, a good pumpkin ale, and you can taste that roasted pumpkin. I taste it in the beginning, I taste it in the mid, and I definitely taste it in the aftertaste. The roasted pumpkin is just, I'm sorry. Hands down, it's the way to go. You can play with the spices. You can make it more cinnamon, more nutmeg, a little ginger, a little allspice, a little clove, whatever you want. You can add or take away the bourbon vanilla based on how much you want to add, but don't slack on the roasted pumpkin. It makes the beer. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and thank you very much for all the support lately. It's been going nuts. Truly appreciate it. Thank you again, and happy holidays to everybody as they approach. Yeah, I know it's August, but we know the stores are already flipping merchandise, trying to promote things. And I know some people won't see this until the holidays. So again, happy holidays ahead of time. Thank you.